Hello there. This is Critical from Critical Media. Just taking a look at the 2022 English hardcover release of Shuna's Journey from Hayao Miyazaki, and in this case, translated by Alex DeWitt. And what we usually do at this channel is give you an idea of what to expect if you ever come across these books in the wild. So we go over the exterior, some bonus material, art and plot points, and then a brief review at the end. Now, what's interesting about this book is it's pretty much the entomology of a lot of the Grand Masters' designs. So, yes, you'll see notes of, you know, Tales of Ursi, that character Teru, a lot like Thea from this. Of course, the concept of a young prince going out to try and help his village, a lot like Ashitaka from Princess Mononoke, or Mononoke Hime. And probably most notably is a lot of the notes from Naushka of the Valley of the Wind, the book, or even the film. Love this movie. But um, to those purists out there, this book is very unique for me because a lot of those films, especially Castle in the Sky and Naushka, they both relate to my favorite video game of all time, Crystallis on the NES, which is actually known as God Slayer in Japan. Another little Easter egg of Naushka. But anywho, at least in terms of this release, because yes, you are going to see a lot of the origins of that. In terms of the exterior, just a downplayed dust jacket here. This book actually comes from a publisher called First Second. So very unique in that light. In terms of the spine, yeah, very much continuing that thread from the cover. And a very downplayed exterior rear here. Although it has two interesting quotes from Guillermo del Toro and Daisy Ridley, who actually did a voice for one of the Ghibli films. I think it was for uh, Only Yesterday. But that's all besides the point here. Just found that interesting there. In terms of underneath the dust jacket, an excellent design with this blue hue. Again, almost feel like that's a nod to Naushka again. And this excellent little gold foil. Not really much going on the back. But it looks really good on the spine, I can't deny. Now, for bonus material, uh, we're really just getting some interviews or afterwards. So yes, we have one from the original period when this book released, from Miyazaki himself. It, admittedly, saying that he's grabbed the story from a Tibetan folk tale. So yes, it does have a lot of that uh, tropes to it. But I do appreciate the historical reverence as well. And a pretty lengthy take from the translator, but honestly, it's a good one. Um, you could tell like he was clearly passionate about making sure this was accurate. So very on point in that regard. Now, in terms of story and plot points, for those of you who've read um, or watched, I should say, uh, Princess Mononoke, you're going to find a lot of common ground here, especially with uh, that combined with Naushka. So yeah... It's a young prince, Shuna himself, and you'll almost see very familiar staging here. Looks a lot like Naushka's village. So, yeah, you're almost seeing those core concepts here. But um, essentially their village is visited upon this old man, this old traveler, and he kind of gives hope to this impoverished nation struggling with a famine of a golden seed that they can grow. Um, but, you know, you have to travel quite far and far, quite far beyond the realms of the world to get it. And you're kind of given this idea that this, you know, this world that they're living in, it doesn't have so much of a, I guess, what's the word? An ancient aspect, but more of a post-world aspect to it. But yeah, very similar to Ashitaka. Yes, Shuna himself goes out traveling for this very same golden seed. And the prose of this book comes off more of a storybook aspect. You'll kind of see it's more narration of the events. Yes, there'll be dialogue as well. But, yeah, it does have more of a storybook prose to it. Now, don't let that, de you know, deter you. Some of the elements of the story are pretty heavy, like cannibalism right there and slavery. So, if you think it's for kids, it may be, but... Admittedly, it takes more serious tones than you realize. But yeah, you're just seeing this excellent work, as always, from Miyazaki. 
Uh, it's very interesting to see a color adaptation because that was one thing Naushka wasn't. Like the the book was a pure on manga, whereas this definitely has more of a storybook feel to it. You know, it's very gorgeous in its design. You're going to see a lot of design traits that get adopted into the Ghibli films. But yeah, you're just getting this constant idea that, yeah, this world, it's lived in. It has its own history without explaining too much. You know, this whole concept of slave trades, the god folk and whatnot. But yeah, you just see that humanity in soul as usual. Somehow, Miyazaki's always managed to, you know, tie that line between almost cutesy, serious, and yet emotional impact in his art. I've always found that to be his true gift. Somehow he can always add a human element to just still imagery. So, excellent as always. But yeah, you know, the young hero, he even kind of looks like Asbel from, what's the word, uh... Aspel from Naushka, the Pajit dude. Um, but yeah, very similar design traits. But yeah, you're kind of getting this serious tone, I was, as I was mentioning earlier. Very on point. Even has notes of that uh, Makoto Shinkai film. Uh, what's it called? I think it was called, um, oh yeah, uh, The Children Who Chase Lost Voices from Below. I remember there's that part in the film where the character starts climbing down and entering this ethereal plane. Very similar here. Very on point. And yeah, again with the bug life, life uh, sorry, life that you're seeing here. Again, another nod to Naushka. And that's what I'm kind of noticing with this book. It's so pleasing to read on its own, but just knowing all the, I guess, Studio Ghibli referencing, very on point. Even the referencing to uh, Mobius here, the French artist who Miyazaki's been on record many a time lauding about. But yeah, very on point. Um, yeah, just there's something about Miyazaki's like almost childlike approach to their heroes. You know, they're always teenagers or whatnot. But it allows it to have a more rounded and more pleasing kind of appeal to it. And yes, this image, I don't know how nobody smiles or just feels happy. Just seeing the happiness that, yeah, Miyazaki manages to get or capture just in this one figure, this one set of anatomies. So, very on point as always. And yeah, like I mentioned, a lot of Naushka in this character, but a lot of uh, Teru from Tales of Ursi as well. Very on point. Um, the paper stock is very unique too. It don't, as I mentioned, because it kind of feels like a storybook, yeah, they did opt for that kind of paper grain. So, big ups to them in that respect. But yeah, all in all, a nice lighthearted tale, a very, you know, core to humanity kind of story. It's just about feeding your village, man, and the lengths you'll go through or the journeys you'll go across just to try and do the right thing. A very wholesome story, as always. Um, yeah, I would say this is a lot for a purist of Studio Ghibli. Yeah, it's an enjoyable story. It's about 140 pages, but... As mentioned, like if you're a fan of Ghibli films or Naushka of the Valley with the Wind, especially, you're going to get a lot out of this book. Like, I love it. I have nothing but smiles. Probably going to play Crystallis again and just think of this story this time. But anywho, it's not so much about my opinion at this point. As always, I wouldn't mind hearing your opinions down below in the comments or whether you're going to come across this or maybe just give it a once over. Either way, y'all folks enjoy the rest of your day and... See you guys in the next video.